Welcome to RLA Virtual Walking Tours. I'm Ken Bernstein with Los Angeles City Planning's Office of Historic Resources. The historic districts that our office works to preserve are about more than uh, beauty and architectural character. They're also about creating a sense of community. And there's rarely been a time when that close-knit sense of connection or community is more needed than right now. We're in a time of social distancing where most of us are staying pretty close to home and we're not able to experience the historic places we love around Los Angeles. So we asked many community leaders around the city to bring some of these places to us through the use of technology and to take us on a virtual walk around their neighborhood and in the process to share about how our historic neighborhoods can be a source of strength in difficult times. For this installment, we go to Lamert Park, a historic planned community from the 1920s near South LA's Crenshaw District. It's, it's been an important center of African-American culture since the 1960s. And our local guy in Lamert Park will be Karen Mack, founder and director of LA Commons, a nonprofit based in this neighborhood that showcases the rich cultural fabric of all of Los Angeles. Karen's also a member of our LA City Planning Commission. Over to you, Karen. Thanks, Ken. Welcome to Lamert Park, Los Angeles' African-American cultural hub. My organization, LA Commons, has been in residence here for close to 15 years. We love the spirit of the neighborhood as everyone is attracted to the power of art and community. In recent months, Lamert Park's significance to black people in Los Angeles has only heightened. With the major focus these days on the Black Lives Matter movement, it is important that we have a place to call our own. In the next few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to the area and its history and a few of my great neighbors who own legacy businesses here. Lamert Park was developed as a model of urban design in the 1920s by Walter Lamert and the sons of Frederick Law Olmsted, the famous landscape architect who developed so many masterpieces like Central Park in New York. The centerpiece of the neighborhood reflecting this history is the stunning Art Deco Vision Theater. There was actually a fire here a couple of weeks ago, but luckily the damage was only minor and the theater remains intact and ready to welcome people when the renovation finishes next year. This is Stagnant Boulevard, the main drag of the Lamar Park Village, which is actually the commercial area of a much larger footprint given all the residential buildings that are here in the neighborhood. Because of restricted covenants, blacks were not welcome for many years, the neighborhood really began its current incarnation in the 1960s when brothers Dale and Alonzo Davis moved to Los Angeles from the South to bring their artistic skills to the civil rights movement. Their strategy was to open Brockman Gallery to cultivate African-American artists who could bring a message of empowerment through their work. And they worked with some of the amazing talent uh, that was then and now. Betty Saar, John Outerbridge, David Hammonds. As a matter of fact, they were just cited in the New York Times as one of the three most influential galleries in America for bringing African Americans into the art world. Sika has been here since the Brockman Gallery days. He's an amazing jeweler, and you can see if you want to get your nose pierced, this is the place used to be. Let's meet him now. I've been here now for going on 29 years, since uh, 1992. The type of business that I have is uh, a conglomeration of art from Africa and uh, artists in this country, and my artwork, which is jewelry and wall sculptures out of metal and uh, we sell clothes and stuff that come from Togo and uh, Mali, Nigeria, Ghana, Tanzania. And, and they consist of masks and uh, different types of sculptures and drums. It's uh, something to, uh, to keep our culture going and, 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 and get people to be more Afrocentric and proud of the things that we produce ourselves. What makes it Lamert Park special is that it's a cultural outlet for art and uh, our culture is being Afrocentric, coming from Africa. We're carrying on a culture here so that people will know 
those that have never been to Africa or maybe might not ever make it to Africa, it's an outlet where it can be inspiring to seek out going to Africa. And I couldn't, I couldn't think of any other place that I'd want to be on this planet. Hot and Cool is a relatively new space. It's extremely popular. Tony Jolly will tell you all, all about it. Yo, yo, this is Tony Jolly, co-owner of the Hot and Cool Cafe here in the historic Lamert Park Village, the Black Arts District, the home of the Black Renaissance era. It's not dying. I heard drums today here in these streets. The heartbeat of Lamert Park still lives despite our current pandemic. And uh, Lamert Park chose me, chose us. I didn't choose it, and since we've been here, we've been trying to provide a platform for creatives, for artists, for critical thinkers, a haven for the community to come together and grow, grow together and learn while eating healthy. Um, it's a pleasure to be here in Lemur Park, and I can't think of any place else to, to establish a specialty coffee shop. Renee Fisher Mims of Shine Muasi, also affectionately known as Mama Nene, runs the Thursday night women's drum circle. And this amazing group of drummers who uh, showcase their talents all over the city. Greetings everyone, my name is Dwight Tribble. I am the executive director of the World Stage, the World Stage uh, in Lamert Park. Uh, we've been, this is our 31st year, so we've been here now for over 30 years. Our address is 4321 Degnan Boulevard, used to be 4344 Degnan Boulevard. Uh, why is it that I got involved in doing the, and in being involved with the world stage? Kamal Daoud and Billy Higgins, they have been such a pivotal part of my life, my career, and all of that, and they made a space for me way, way, way back 30 years ago. And what I'm doing now is just trying to give back what they gave to me. That is what I'm trying to do, and I'm sure that we will continue to do that and pass it on to the next generation. So thank you very much for coming and, and putting the world stage in your movie. It's, uh, it's uh, one of the cornerstones of Lamert Park. Okay, thank you very much. Peace. There's one last artist I want to introduce you to, our landlord and partner, the incredible Ben Caldwell, the founder of Chaos Network. He's also been here since the Brockman days, and it has an inspiring vision for the future of Lamert Park. Hello, my name is Ben Caldwell, owner and director of Chaos Network. I've been here since 1984 doing artwork around our community. So I'm, uh, um, I'm presently working on a project that's called Sankofa City. And I best tell you by showing you what we have as a slide deck on this uh, format. And it's basically called Sankofa City. Here we are right in front of the Vision Theater, uh, which is my building's right to the right of that. And this is in the near future. Uh, we ended up putting together a people street that's out front. That people street then like grew into this wonderful Sankofa City Park that's a part of Destination Crenshaw that Marquise uh, and them are putting together. And we look forward to doing this for La Mer. Ben is bringing the past, present, and future together in historic Lamert Park with virtual reality in self-driving cars and stops along Destination Crenshaw, the coming outdoor art and cultural experience. I can't wait to see it realize. Thanks for coming along on this tour. Many thanks to Karen, as well as Tony, Dwight, and Ben for sharing their community with us. And if you'd like to take us on a virtual walk of your historic LA neighborhood, please get in touch to let us know. And we'll see you next time on RLA Virtual Walks.